I'm going to be t discussing HPV-related head and neck cancer, kind of with an emphasis on the new WHO classification and also the new CAP guidelines for head and neck uh, HPV testing. Uh, so, why talk about HPV? I, I think this is probably obvious, but certainly uh, we hear a lot about this. It's in the lay press, as you see here. Uh, certainly a lot of in, uh, interest in it. I'm sure you've had you know, discussions with your colleagues uh, about how you should be doing HPV testing. You may have even talked to some of your patients, which I've done, which is always a weird thing, talking about what that means and, and, and the significance of it. So certainly there is a lot of interest. That, that, that much is clear. But if you've ever kind of tried to dive into the HPV literature, you, you have very quickly find yourself like this guy, very overwhelmed with all the data going back to the 80s, uh, a lot of which is confusing, a lot of which is kind of contradictory, and just making sense out of it, it, it can be a real challenge, actually. So that was kind of the point, the goal of the uh, CAP, uh, kind of putting together a panel of people, uh, of which I was lucky to be a part of, and basically try to come up with some guidelines, you know, some simple, relatively straightforward guidelines that we can all follow uh, and, and make sense of this. So the idea was to take all that data and basically distill it down into some practical recommendations that we can use in our daily practices and not have to go through all that, that data ourselves. So here they are. Uh, there are 14 of them. Uh, I don't obviously expect you to read this. You have them in your handouts. And we're going to go over most of them uh, in the talk today. Uh, and they are now out. Uh, it's still, I think, EPUB ahead of print, but they're definitely available on the uh, Archives of Pathology and Lab Medicine website. Uh, and I believe also on the CAP website. So you can definitely look at these, at least kind of go over the 14 guidelines and know what they are. Okay, so a little bit of background. Uh, I think you all have probably heard this, but uh, just a little background data on head and neck cancer. So for many decades, uh, it totally made sense. You know, the rates of head and neck cancer tracked very nicely with the rates of smoking, which is completely intuitive. Uh, but something weird began happening, of course, in the uh, 80s and then on into the 90s and, and beyond, where these kind of curves began to split. Uh, and it was kind of a mystery there for a while. What is going on here? Why are head and neck cancer uh, rates rising again, even though smoking is not? And of course, now we know the reason. It's uh, high-risk types of human papillomavirus is kind of the culprit for this divergence here. 